think the question is, can anyone become a mangaka? Can anyone from outside Japan just simply just pick up a piece of paper, sit down for a couple hours, and just create a story where anything can happen? Create characters that you love, create villains that you hate, can create a world that you can only dream of. Can anyone even have the patience to do all those things? Whether you're working on a novel, comic book, a video game, TV series, movies, even manga, it isn't easy. It takes long hours, a lot of patience with discipline, a lot of dedication, all of your body and your mind, and it takes a lot of sacrifices just to do the things you love the most. And just because you picked that life, it doesn't guarantee you to be successful. And while you want to be successful, you want to do it because you love it too. My name is Jamal Malik Clammer, and I love drawing manga. I started drawing when I was two when I was living in Japan at the time. But what got me really motivated is when one of my best friends introduced me to Spawn, and I was hooked. And while I was interested in drawing the comics, there was something missing. That one push that I needed to get things moving. And on a Sunday on Fox Kids, I turned the channels and I was introduced to Dragon Ball Z. I was amazed by the art in the world of the series and I decided that I wanted to draw that for the rest of my life. And while doing so, I met so many wonderful people that loved the same thing as I did. I then found out all the series that I loved, and the more I did it, the more I loved it even more. But I also want to create my own series as well. And with the encouragement of my friends and family, and the comics and manga that influenced me, and a lot of hard work, on June 20th, 1996, the series Dark Blood was born with Knight being the main character. My parents saw me taking this seriously, so they did everything they can to show their support. And normally, you never really get that. Usually from your friends and family, they usually tell you to stop or try to do something else, but that wasn't the case. I can see from their eyes that they really wanted me to succeed in this, so they showed their support. This is the very first manga that I owned that my father bought me, and it really meant so much to me. I was able to learn so much from this. And it wasn't just only that manga, there were so many more that helped me on my way of becoming a manga cut. These three series made me want to become a better artist and a better storyteller. A long time ago, I submitted my one stop to Tokyo Pop. I can't remember how I found out about it, or in 2004, but it didn't matter because I couldn't wait to start. So I worked hard that way I can get published so I could show my story to the entire world. And after a couple weeks, I was able to do it. And even though I did a whole lot of pages, colored it, while sending it to them in black and white, it was rejected and I was crushed. And at first I was sad and angry, but then I wasn't ready. I mean, when you can't even read the title on your cover page, then you know you're not ready. So I accepted that rejection. And I wanted to start over that way I get better in the future. Around 2006, I went to an anime convention called Otakon with a couple of friends of mine and met so many artists there. I was sort of awe of what they did and I wanted to do that too. So I asked for some advice on how to get started and started to rebuild my characters and my storytelling. And from 2009 to 2010, I helped some friends. I managed to create the first volume of Dark Below. I still need to find a way to turn it into a book. A friend at a convention told me about Ludo.com and with the help of my best friend, my manager, and my parents, I was able to find the funding for the series. She's seen all the prototypes for the books, and I have to say there was a lot of hiccups, but somehow we were able to find a way to make them right. I find sketching the manga is a lot more easier than it looks. You make tons of mistakes, and when you're ready to ink, you can just go ahead and just cut them out. 
and you have a new idea you can go ahead and just put it in there on the spot this takes up a lot of pressure when doing it Normally you use screen tones to use for your manga, but I like the ability to do so. But I just didn't want to leave it just black and white, so I just tried to find another way. And in the end, end up being markers. I want to keep it as close to a manga as I can, so I start out with gray Copic marker. However, I end up running out of all the gray markers, so I use whatever I can find in order to make it as a substitute for grayscale. And even though I can use digital, there's just something appealing in just using markers for me anyway. For me to see exactly what type of colors can actually match up for making a grayscale color for the manga it just seems so appealing. And I love to draw in digital. It's that it just it just seems so much fun just doing stuff in traditional and just trying to find new ways in order to make something work. And I think I just lost the challenge of just trying to find out exactly how it's going to look out by the end of the day. And in the end, I found the colors I wanted to use for my manga. For some reason, yellow, orange, green, and dark green seem to somehow make like a really good mix for it to be scanned and you can just see it in grayscale. I didn't realize this until volume 2. But when I got a chance to scan it, I was like, oh my god, I just couldn't believe exactly how nice this looks. And from that point on, I decided to use these colors for my manga. And so far, it does get a little bit hard at first, but when you get used to it, you can just do anything. So with the confidence of using these colors, I started volume 3. I just couldn't believe that these type of markers that I used and end up just making such beautiful grayscale. I substitute for my tones. And I think for other Amangaka, whether it be born from Japan or not, I think that every last one of them was to put out the best presentation for the readers for not only to just following the story, but they're looking at these visuals of seeing exactly what's going for your mind. Now sometimes it doesn't come out the way that you want and you want to do it as best as you can. It could take hours, days, sometimes weeks for most people. But for me, back then I used to think a lot and sometimes it just didn't work out. But I soon realized. And you just like, just not even think about it. Somehow the image just pops in your mind and you're able to put it on the paper. Now I know this doesn't work for everybody. Because America and Japan are on a tight schedule. Some of them lose sleep. Some have too much stress. Some of them miss their loved ones. Some of them miss doing their hobbies. And unfortunately, some of them get health issues. To the point where they have to take a hiatus for months years and in the worst case some of them even died while writing them on while completing it and that's really that's really sad i think now today with the manga industry they're finding ways to put less stress on their artists but we just have to wait and see but still the sound about that i, I see that's very inspirational we're under the pressure of the deadline we seem to somehow get the very best from them and even though it's sad to see they get sick from it i can't help but admire their spirit because they could either quit if they wanted to and do something else, but in the end, they still want to find a way to complete their story. Some are successful, some are not, but they fight to the end. And that really inspires me. And I'm very grateful to my friends, past and present, that helped me with my manga to this day. Even though I do low coloring for grayscale, there was something else that I was missing. Back while I was in high school when I was talking about making a manga, a friend of mine was asking if I was going to make it in color, and I said, yeah, sure. But doing a physical copy was just too expensive. So for a while, I kind of lost hope. But the voice in the back of my head told me that I, somehow I can find a way to make this in color. And at the time, I didn't know or when it was gonna actually going to happen, but somehow last year, I found a way to do it. And then that's digital. Because today, we can share our stories and art through online. 
and showcase it to the entire world. Not to mention, I wanted to bring that color feeling that I love when I'm reading comic books. I always love the bold colors when I read comic books. You get a chance to see what the character looks like in color. You get a chance to read the author's points of why they chose those colors. And I wanted to show the reader what my manga looks like in color. That way they can see what I can see. But I knew it was going to be too long. Even though I love coloring, it just takes a long time just to do it. So I decided to take a chance and put all four pages on 11 by 17 paper. And at first I didn't think it was going to work, but somehow I managed to make it work. It was not a dumb look, but somehow it, things just seemed to work out when you just give it a shot. And even though, and I'm glad I did, because somehow I was able to find a way to turn this into color and make it available to the public. And I know that some manga do want to have their mangas in color, but due to the tight schedule, so I'm not able to. And I'm grateful that I have the time to color them and take my time while doing so. And I don't care how many pages I have to color, as long as my readers enjoy it, then I enjoy it. Before I end this video, I want to answer my own question. Can anyone become a mangaka? I believe no matter where you live in this world, you can become anything if you put your mind to it. And some of them are going to say no. Some of them are going to say that you can't do it. Some of them are going to say horrible things about your work. But I want to take the time to talk about a mangaka that really inspired me that most of you don't know to keep drawing manga. I got this from a friend and that's where I read about the mangaka named Yuji Okay. He started his career at the age of 45, and even though he was in his mid-40s, his age didn't stop him from doing the one thing he wanted to do, and that was to draw manga. I'm very grateful to have manga introduced in my life, in a way it saved me. I got to work on three volumes, now I'm working on the fourth one, with an end that I can't wait to reach one day. And even to some people, they may not think that I'm a true mangaka. And I may never be recognized in their own eyes. That's fine with me because I know what my passion is. And no matter what happens down the road, I'm never going to stop. I'm going to keep doing manga until the day I go. And when that does happen, I'll find a way to come back just to do it again. Because I love to draw manga. And I always will.